Count on me on two. One, two. Count me! He never made a tackle or threw a block. What's up? You good? Feeling good? Good to see you. <laughs> or caught a pass. He was never listed on the roster. But Sam Grew was as much a part of Notre Dame's magical season as any player who wore a uniform. We all made a promise to him that he would be our brother. And I believe, at least for me, it's, it's, uh, it goes beyond football. It goes beyond this season. It's not a this year thing. It's not a next year thing. It's not a while I'm in college thing. It's a forever thing. Growing up in Middlebury, Indiana, Sam Grew made all the plays on all his teams as often as he could. The seventh grade football team, he led his team in rushing and receiving yards and touchdowns and he did the kicking and the punting and all that, so it was a big part of his life. After his seventh grade football season, Sam began to feel pain in his right leg. Christmas week 2011, a doctor gave his family the news. Cancer. A lot of questions, you know, am I going to die, how sick am I going to be, am I still going to be able to play sports? You know, is it deadly? Is it, is it gonna paralyze me? I don't know what the side effects would be. Sam was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, an aggressive malignant bone cancer. This spring, while preparing to undergo surgery to amputate part of his right leg, the Notre Dame football team adopted Sam as part of the Fighting Irish football team this season. He was gonna have to lose his leg. And our players knew of him through a video that I showed of him playing football and his love for playing sports. He showed uh, Sam's highlights of him playing football, playing receiver. It was unbelievable seeing him out there running around. And to see all that gone is, you know, it's, it hurts your heart. They all had on uh, Grew Crew t-shirts. They all had on uh, Grew Crew wristbands. Every single one of them was standing up, giving my son a standing ovation. Two days later, Sam underwent rotation plasty surgery. His right knee and part of his leg were removed, with the remaining portion below the knee rotated and reattached. Essentially, his ankle became his knee, his foot became his shin to fit inside a prosthetic leg. Say wave and hi to everybody. A choice Sam made to keep his athletic dreams intact. In addition to the amputation, Sam has spent 150 nights in the hospital this year and has already faced 19 sessions of chemotherapy. Yet whenever he could this season, he spent time with his team and he never missed a home game. We're talking about one game he went to backpack with 10 pounds of IV fluid on. He had to be on IV because he had just had chemo, it was still in his system, and he's out there on the field with the guys during the warm-ups. When he's with us, he's just, you know, he's one of the guys, he's hanging out, coming up the training table, and so it's, it's tremendous perspective, and I mean, I couldn't have asked for, you know, a, a better role model than Sam is. They always described it as brothers, but I never really saw it that way. I saw him more as friends, because you don't always get along with your brothers, but. After Notre Dame's final home game this season, Sam was taken into the locker room. In that hallowed place, there's a tradition, typically reserved for team captains and Irish legends, leading the team in the Irish fight song. On this day, a boy who never made a play for the Irish was given that honor. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Notre Dame went undefeated, but through that, that left Sam victorious because he could be a part of it. They gave him the reason to, to keep going. 